Hello all, welcome to this new tutorial on JSON. Uh, this is a continuing series on data preparation. Uh, earlier in data preparation we had looked at uh, web scraping and we basically tried to use packages such as uh, beautiful soup to, to extract content as well as tags from HTML web pages. Right? Um, in this tutorial we are going to look at uh, this concept of or this format called JSON which actually makes it easy for us to extract content from other websites that are out there. Websites are resources over the web. Okay, So what we are going to look at today or in this module is what is this JSON and how do we use JSON in Python. Okay, So first things first, what is JSON? You may have heard of it uh, in the past. It's typically talked about it in the same breath as when we talk about uh, XML. It is very similar to XML, but it is considered a lightweight object format that is used to exchange data in a structured format okay uh, again if this is if this sounds too abstract just remember that JSON again JavaScript object notation right it's basically provides data to us instead of us using scraping to get at content Websites decide, sites such as Twitter or on Facebook and Google, they decide to provide us with some data, right? And they will provide this data to us in a structured format. And oftentimes, this format tends to be the ones we are familiar with, uh, specifically the ones lists and dictionaries, right? So they provide data to us using lists and dictionaries, okay? So it corresponds closely with these structures in Python. And all we need to do is write a piece of code don't worry about HTML, just the content that we want in structures that we are already familiar with. Okay? For example, maybe in Twitter, we'll, find, we'll, we'll be able to extract the friends of a Twitter user, right? or tweets from a certain person for the last several days, or tweets about a particular topic. So these, this information, websites such as or our services such as Twitter provide to us typically for free, but if you want to use it for commercial purposes, then obviously you would pay Twitter and Facebook and Google a fee for using these services for commercial gain. And these services also often have something like something that we call as rate limit, meaning you cannot continuously you know, extract data from them. So as we go forward in the next module, I will also talk about uh, this concept of APIs which provides you a method of extracting this data, typically in a JSON format. And it also tells you that you need to be aware of some of these rate limits. Don't overuse uh, the courtesy, then Twitter might end up banning you from using their service. Okay, um, So let's go on and have a look at the actual JSON. Uh, how does JavaScript object notation, how does it look like in practice? Let's have a look. Okay, So now here we have two strings, JSTR1 and JSTR2, okay? I'm going to call it JSTR and JSTR2. They are in quotes, and internally the structure might look somewhat familiar to you. At least I hope so. This looks like a dictionary, key, value, key, value, key, value, right? So this is what I would call as uh, some data that's already in JSON format string encoded JSON format because it's in a string, okay? And so it starts with the, while it starts with the dictionary curly braces, they are string encoded. It's in JSON format already, okay? So this is something like what a website might provide us, okay? And here's another example, JSTOR2, okay? Again, very similar idea, but I'm just expressing the same information, right? Same structure with spacing so you can actually easily have a look at it visually and understand what information is being provided to you okay same structure as before but because it's in multiple lines i use triple quotes so it's still a string encoded uh, object okay so for strings if you want to express something in multiple lines for clarity then you would use three quotes okay so string objects, we can use single quotes, double quotes, or triple quotes, okay? 
the only thing I want to make sure that you understand is that for JSON, okay, especially for JSON, you should use double quotes for both key and values. Otherwise, you may have a problem, okay? So you need to use double quotes for both the keys and, and the values, okay, inside, if it's a dictionary format. And you need to either use a single quote outside or triple quote if you're writing string encoded JSON strings. But the structure kind of should look familiar to you, okay? If not, go back, take a look at the dictionary and list module before you proceed, okay? Now, how do we take this data structure along with the data, right? That's in JSON format and convert this to string. So again, you probably get a sense of how this should be done, bunch of code that's already there. So we would use a library that's already provided to us called import JSON, right? And it's already there. All you need to do is write that one line. And then if I actually want to translate this, right? This JSON encoded string to a Python data structure, okay? Use this command, JSON dot, right? Referring to the package, load as, load from string. Okay, JSTOR1, and I'm having a second variable here, JP2, that basically does the same thing to JSTOR2. Okay, so now let's explore to see what type of uh, objects we think uh, we think JP1 and JP2 are. Okay, so let's let's see. Oh, I'm getting a message because the name JSTOR1 is not defined. Obviously, I forgot to run the code in the cell before, so I need. To, let me make sure that Python knows what JSTOR one and JSTOR two are. I'm going to run that. Now, let me run this code. Okay. So now it's basically telling you that by using this function or method load s, I converted JSON encoded string, right? Uh, that's a JSON object uh, to a dictionary internal Python structure. Okay, and the length of JP one. This is JP1 uses JSTOR1, right? It's three, because there are three keys in here, or three key value pairs in here, okay? So the class is dictionary, and uh, and the length is three, okay? So here, I'm not going to do this for you. Take a moment. How would you access the elements inside this dictionary, right? So write code to print the keys and values right for jp1 or jp2 they're both going to be similar the data is different but the structure is the same the length is three okay all right so hopefully you were able to figure out the code for printing out the key and value pairs in a dictionary so for key and value i call them k and v in jp1 which is a dictionary dot items right print key and value and that should give you the key and the value for that dictionary, JP1, the ID 1, age 20, name Tim, okay? And now let's look at another um, more complex JSON, um, JSON object here. So here you see a slight variation. Take a closer look and tell me if you use this operation, load as JSTR3, what do you think the type of this object would be, okay? So what Python structure do you think it's going to be? Take a close look, think about this, okay? It is more complex, but if you notice, sure, it has dictionaries and key value pairs. It actually has a bunch of them separated by commas, right? The last one does not have a comma. And then at the very end, you see the symbol, square bracket, indicating that it's a list of dictionaries, okay? Somewhat similar to what we saw, you know, with JP1 and JP2 in terms of structure. It's basically repeating these values, okay? So now, this, again, I want to, again, I want to mention that just please, I, I would encourage you to at least type a simple version of this or even type out a simple version of JSTR2 by yourself. You will invariably make some mistakes, get some error messages, but it's best if you try to type this out yourself, okay? Create a new string, you know, call it jester, you know, temp. Try to create 
a new dictionary because you will probably make some mistakes. Just remember that this needs to be in double quotes, ID. The values need to be in double quotes. They all need to be inside in double quotes for a dictionary. Okay? And also take a closer look at the structure here for JSTR3. Dictionary, similar double quotes. Once you finish the value, comma, then you have the second dictionary. And the way I type it out, you know, I type it out so that you can visually read this easily. Okay? Of course, I can also, if I wanted to make it even more easy, I can just put all of this in one line, separated by commas, okay? And it'll be a list of three dictionaries, all right? So now let's try to do the same thing that we did before, import JSON and jp3 equal to json.loads, jstr3, okay? And if you try to, let me make sure I run this first. And now if I try to look at what kind of object do you think it is, unsurprisingly, you'll see that it's a list. This is a list of dictionaries. It has three dictionary values, in, three dictionary objects in here, okay? So the length of this list is going to be three. It's a length that contains three items that happen to be dictionaries, okay? So soon, hopefully, you'll be used to these, I mean, still simple, but reasonably, you know, um, it, it's getting a little bit more, you know, I guess, more complex compared to the simple lists and simple dictionaries we looked at before. Uh, you'll be processing data like this from other sites, right? Could be could be Netflix uh, or Netflix-related sites. Could be IMDb, right? Or it could be Twitter. And when it comes to Twitter, you want to find out that this structure still follows broadly. It's either a dictionary or a list of dictionaries, but the structure itself might be a lot more complex. So part of you working with Twitter means can you try to separate out and print or extract just the items you want, just the key value pairs you want from an API that's provided by you know one of these services that's out there on the web. Okay? So now the question I have for you is given that you've extracted this, right, and loaded this into Python as a list, do you know how to print? Let's say if I want you to print the name, okay? Either for each of the each of the dictionary items, or just the name for the third item, right? Third dictionary in this list. Do you know how to print the name? Okay. So again, I want you to think about this. I can go back and refer to lists and dictionaries. You can almost certainly expect a question, you know, that's going to ask you to extract specific values from a more complex structure like this. Okay. So now, let's try to do that. Maybe instead of just the third one, let's do, let's try to iterate through the list, which is JP3, right? It's a list of dictionaries, and try to print the name. Not the name, rather the value for the key name in each of these dictionary structures, okay? Again, you remember the for loop, you remember the dictionary structure, you remember the list structure. So this is basically working in, with a list, it's going to be, it's going to contain three items, and for each item, I'm basically, since they happen to be dictionaries, to print them out, I'm using the dictionary syntax here. So DT, and here's my key, name. If I want the age, obviously I would replace the name with age here. And of course, this doesn't have to be DT, right? It's a variable, I can always have for item. And in that case, I would make this item. Okay, so let's see if this works. There you go, I was able to extract the name, the value of the name in these three different dictionary objects. That's a list of three dictionaries, okay? Now let's look at a, another example that adds another attribute to this dictionary, okay? I'm calling this JSTR4. Again, this is a JSON object, string encoded JSON object, contains one, two, and three dictionaries. Each dictionary has four attributes, okay? And the first attribute, one, ID, name is Tim, age is 20, but you notice that it's slightly more complex. The telephone object, the value of this telephone object is itself a dictionary. So I have two attributes here, extension number, right? So tele instead of telephone number, it's an extension number, let's say within an office, and it basically says another attribute that says is it private number, or a public number, right? If it's private is no, maybe presumably it's listed in a directory, 
If it's yes, then maybe it won't be listed in a directory, telephone directory. Okay. And so let's go down here. So examine this. If, if you want, try to type this out, right? So you see dictionary within a dictionary here. So what do you think the object is going to be? If you look at this, I think the object would be a list because it's a list of dictionaries, okay? And the length would be three. Again, one, two, one, three. So I can run this. Oh, I don't think I ran the previous cell. So let me run this again. So now we have a list object with a length of three, okay? And again, I want you to, I mean, before I go to the code, I want you to think about, you know, how would you print, for example, access the name, which we looked at before, right? Access the name, as well as, let's say, I want to know whether the person's telephone number is private or not, okay? So think about that and try to see if you can write code for this on your own, okay? So hopefully you've thought about it. Here's how the code might look like for DT in JP4, okay? Again, DT could be item, it's a variable name. Print, it's gonna go up here slightly. Print, right? Now, this each of this list, each of the items in the list is gonna be a dictionary. So I need to use the dictionary syntax, DT name, which is what we did before, right? Comma, now I also want to print, let's say the extension, oh, I said whether it's private or not. Let's say I wanna print the extension, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say DT, telephone number, right, TEL. So that's going, to, that's going to let me access this value, which happens to be another dictionary. If I only want the extension, then I need to unpack it a little bit more. So I need to add another key here. So DT, TEL, and then within square brackets, extension. This should just get me this value, 1002, okay? Because if I leave it at DT, TEL, it's going to be different. Okay, so let's try running this. So here are your values, right? So the name, Tim, his extension is 1000. Kim's extension is 1001. Who wants extension is 1002. And that's what you print, okay? If you want, you can try the reading this, print this and see what comes up, right? I, I removed um, the extension in square brackets that's going to print the entire dictionary, right? In our case, I didn't want that, I wanted just the extension. And also note that even though I entered the, entered the values in this order, extension and then private, when I, when I printed it, the order was reversed, not reversed, there was no order really. So you cannot expect order in dictionary. You already know that, okay? I just wanted to show you an example of that here. And this really brings to an end uh, this, this particular chapter on, you know, this particular module on um, JSON. So you do see below here a bunch of code, right, that accesses information on the web. I'm not going to cover this here. Instead, I'm going to be moving this code to a different place where I, where I begin to talk about APIs. I just have this here so you can have a quick look and see that now, based on the stuff that we've learned so far, we still use URL lib, right? Maybe we use requests, but now we use JSON, right? So instead of beautiful soup, now we go to a web resource directly, you know, use a URL, returns to me some, some data that's in JSON format. As long as I understand how that format looks like, then I should be able to write code like the ones we wrote here and access just the content that I want. We don't have to worry about scraping the web, right? Using beautiful soup and trying to extract content. Here, websites have provided this for me and I'm just going to be using JSON, you know, and Python's inbuilt data, data structures to be able to access that content quite easily, you will see, okay? So this brings to an end this module on JSON.